Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from Christ our risen King. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, this morning we're going to be taking a look at the epistle lesson which you had just previously heard read. And really these are important words for us to hear today because of our busy lives. The lives that we live. Lives that every day we have to set what's important to us. As we did in the, in the children's message here, we talked, it talks about the fact of what needs to be of greatest importance. You see, every day... As God's people, what we do is we have to set out our priorities for the day. And, and what is important is what sets those pri helps us to set those priorities for that particular day, at that week, and even in our entire lives. What is important in our lives helps us in every way. And what we have to realize is, is that what is it that we have to ask ourselves? What is it that we make a first priority? You see, they were having problems with that at the time that uh, St. Paul was speaking. They were having difficulty understanding what was truly the priority. And what Paul did was reminded him, this is what is of first importance. It's that Jesus Christ died and that he raised again. He raised on that third day and that's what is of most importance. And so as we go, because in our lives today, we understand every, everywhere we turn, somebody is asking us to set a goal or a priority, aren't they? Somebody is always asking us to do it. We set goals for our lives and goals for, for how we want to live, goals for what we want for our children. We set goals for what we want to do in retirement. <clears throat> and so don't you think as we set those goals, as we look at those things, that we have to keep in what's most important in that? And that is what we celebrate today, the fact of Easter, Jesus Christ who came. He came in order to take away our sin, to wash us free from that sin that's in our lives, from those fleshly desires that each one of us have. He came and he died. He did himself on that cross in order that we might have life. But the question is, is what is the priorities in our life? What is it that we make of most importance? You see, that's, the, that's really the big question, isn't it? The world would have us do otherwise. The world has the priorities that it has for us, doesn't it? It tries to make other things important. In fact, as we go about our lives and that, we, we go out into the world and what it does is it tells us that, that certain things that we have to do. And while, yes, I would agree, some of those things that we have to do, like going to school, going to work, and, and, and doing those type of things, we have to make certain priorities in our life. But what is, once again, as I say, of most importance? Is Christ of most importance in our lives? Because when we're out there, when we're outside of these doors, the world has a different idea. In fact, what it does is it takes us and it tries to force God out of us. In fact, really what this world wants us to do is he wants us to forget about God, doesn't it? It wants us to really drown him out and make him insignificant. <clears throat> In fact, as we take a look at our lives, and I know it's this way, I'm told that when you retire, you actually end up busier than what you did when you were working and, and, and taking care of kids and all those other things. That's what I keep being told. Of course, I haven't experienced yet. Someday I'd like to. But you know, I look at my life today and I wonder, how am I ever going to fit anything more in than what I have? And it's probably the same way for those of you who are still working, who are still out there in the world, especially some of you that are just getting ready to start a family or, or have young kids. You feel like you're pulling out your hair already, right? And see, but that's it. Our jobs, a lot of times, they put, the, they put the priorities in there. And what happens is, is that we find ourselves in this world today living, just trying to go from day to day with all the stuff that we have it filled with. In fact, by the time that we get to the weekend, by, Saturday, by the time Saturday comes along, all we want to do is sit in front of the TV and watch basketball, right? 
or football or whatever is on, on the TV. And by the time Sunday gets here, we're tired. We don't want to get out of bed. But you see, that's the goal of what Satan is, is that what he wants to do is he wants to make us so tired, so, so worn out, so much that we forget about God and really what's most important. What he does is he fills our weeks with so much stuff that he wants us to forget about God during the week and it's so easy for us to do it. In fact, when we look in our own lives, how many times do we forget about God? How many times do we forget to, to pray our prayers at night or in the morning? How many times do we forget to open up our Bibles and simply read about the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior? How many times do we blow off church on Sunday morning? You see, the thing about it is, as I look out here and the pews are full today, and wow, this is a great thing, but you know what? Tell me. What are the two slowest days in the church here? What are the two slowest Sundays? It's always the Sunday after Easter and after Christmas. The two fullest days that we have. And why is that? Because the thing about it is, is that as soon as we get out, out of those doors, the world has a different agenda for us. And, and we put those as out, and what it is, it's easy for us to forget. You know, it is one of those things where during this time of the year is when all the Jesus movies are on TV, right? In fact, I know that I've got at, at home, I've had to record all of these movies because you all keep coming to me and asking me, Pastor, what do you think about these? And I've still got a lot of work to do. I know we've got Killing Jesus and AD and all of these things that are out there. And while as busy as, those, as I am with those movies here... How many of those will you remember? How many of those will be on TV next week? You see, the thing about it is, is that once, Christmas, once Easter is over, we forget about it. We forget about those things. And you know, it's like that every year. Every year since there's been television, how many of us right now, if we had to really do it, other than the two that I just told you, can think of another Jesus movie? Well, most of us probably think, well, I do remember that. Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston. Who could forget that? But other than that one, how many more can you tell me? How many more is there? You see, that's the problem is, is that as soon as Easter is over, a lot of times we go back to that, to that world out there. That world that's filled with, with, with dance practice and, and ball practice. We have to take our kids to, to play baseball. We have to watch our grandchildren play basketball. We have to watch all of this kind of stuff. And it gets so filled up with those type of things that Jesus oftentimes gets pushed back. And so that's what we have to do is we have to take a look at, at what Paul says about that. Because it's not only a problem of our day, it was a problem of their time as well. Paul had that same problem. The Romans had that, that, that problem. The Jew, the, the, those, those new Christians, they had that problem. So how did they do that? How did they keep that alive because actually what we have to do is we have to look at, at, at them and what he does is he says focus there on what is most important on Jesus Christ and him crucified and him rising again from the dead and that's what kept their excitement but do you think it was just that how is it that we keep that how is it that we remember that how is it that we make that a party? But it's first of all realizing that the most important thing in this world, in this life, in all there is, is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Here's the reality of it is that if Jesus didn't go to the cross, if Jesus didn't die, and if He did not walk out of that tomb on Easter morning, what's the point? What is the point and the purpose to our lives? Why are we here? Because if he didn't, there is no purpose. There is none. If Jesus didn't die, all we're going to, and, and rise again, what's after this life? Because the reality is, is each one of us are going to die. What's the purpose? If Jesus didn't die on the cross, where are we going to be? Nowhere. Or possibly even somewhere worse. You see, that's where we have to understand that the priority is in our lives. What gives us purpose in this life is the life of Jesus Christ. And the disciples knew that. Paul knew that. 
In fact, he told them, he says, you know, this is, this is what we hold on to. First of all, Jesus, after he rose again, he showed himself. He showed himself to the disciples. He showed himself to, to, to a group of 500 disciples. He showed himself all the time. He came out and he showed himself and he showed that he raised from the dead. And it was in that, it was in that memory, it was in that remembrance that they came together and they would get together every week every week to, to simply talk about what Jesus did, those things that they witnessed and what, he, what it was all about. They talked about what was the most important in their life, and that was Jesus Christ. That's exactly why we're here this morning, here in this sanctuary, here in this place, is to talk amongst one another, one another to hear that word of Jesus Christ. To be reassured and to reassure and, and encourage one another to stay in that word. That word in which reminds us of what truly is important. Because like I said, outside of those doors, when we walk out of those doors, the world has a different agenda for us. It wants to make other things more important than what truly is. But how do we do that? How do we do that in our lives? Well, before... I give you an answer before to give you a chance to think about it I want to tell you a little story and this story was written and published in a book um, I don't I don't even know what the publication was but it was written by a guy named Ben Patterson and what it was about it was about a missionary that went into uh, the jungles of East Asia and the story and the, the article that he wrote in this publication um, was called Resurrection and Pandemonium. And I want you to think about this story as I tell it. Because in this story, what it does is it tells about people that at one time didn't know who Jesus was. But yet these missionaries came to this jungle and started teaching the locals about Jesus and about his love. Well, through that, they, 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 they came to faith and they started to understand who Jesus was. And they started to make Jesus a priority in their lives. They knew that he was the most important because the, he was the one that was making them right. And it had given them a reason for living. Well, it was during this time and what typically missionaries do is that once people kind of have an idea of what's going on in order to help them to understand what, what the crucifixion was all about, they'll set up these large uh, movie screens out there and they'll show them a movie about Jesus' death and resurrection. Well, these people that put God, put, put Jesus first in their life, what they did was they, they had this love for Jesus and they started watching this movie. And as they were watching this movie, they got to the point in time where they had gone to the, to the garden and they had, uh, Jesus was betrayed and he was taken and they, were, they took him before, before Pilate. Well, the people were, were getting mad and getting upset about it. So they started grumbling and started, started you know, kind of shouting and, and, and getting a little bit unruly. And so they had to stop the film. And the missionaries had to tell them, oh, wait a minute, there's more to the story. And so they played a little bit more and they got to the crucifixion. And it went wild from that standpoint. They were upset. They were, they were irate. They were upset because here was the one that, that was the priority in their life. And they saw it and they now understood it. And so they had to, the missionaries had to stop the movie once again. And say, hey, there's more to the story. And so then they played the movie. And when they saw Christ walk out of the tomb on Easter morning, that's when the pandemonium broke out. That's when it was. But it wasn't a situation of being irate. What it was, it was, a, it was an outplay of joy. All of a sudden, these people started dancing, dancing out there in the streets. And, and there, they started throwing parties. They started doing all, And they celebrated for three days. The reason that I bring you is, is that's the type of passion that we need to have for our Lord 
It's the type of passion that we need to have to understand that he is first in our lives and that the reason that he died on that cross, the reason that he went and he hung himself and he endured that suffering was in order for us to have our sins taken away, for us to be wiped clean. And we need to have that same excitement. And we do that by coming here and we're hearing the word. Hearing that word every Sunday. That's why we keep coming back. Because the priority is to hear that word so that we remember, so that the world doesn't choke it out, so that it doesn't hide it under a bush, that our faith is able to be out there and be bold. In fact, here in a few moments, we're going to hear the Hallelujah Chorus. And I want you to listen to that and let it touch your heart and realize that Jesus is first and this is what he did. And, and that's what my heart wants to do is sing these Alleluias to him. But the thing is, is don't let that be something that just ends today. Don't let that be something that, that, that is put over on a shelf for the other 50 days a week. Make Jesus the most important. Because that's really what Easter is about. And yes, Easter is the most important celebration in the church. And kids, as many as you are here, know it's not Christmas. Christmas is important. Christmas is important because that's the day in which Christ came to us, put on flesh, became human so that He could die for us. That's just simply the beginning of the story. The most important is Easter morning. That's the biggest celebration that we should have. That's the biggest celebration. But the thing we've got to do is not let it just fade I know many of us, we have families, and I know the Jirox have a whole horde of people in here. They've got their whole clan in this weekend. And we give God the thanks and the praise because they're celebrating 50 years of marriage. And I know other people here have been blessed by that. Some of us, we haven't quite worked at it that long. And there are others that are just starting. But praise be to God that, that we make Him the, the center and that we have those celebrations. But the greatest celebration is this, is Easter. But don't let it fade. Don't let it go away. I know today some of you are planning on having some wonderful meals with your family and friends. When the ham is all gone and the mashed potatoes and, 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 the, and the desserts are all eaten up, don't let that be the end of your celebration. Let every day be a celebration. Let Easter be in your heart because Jesus is the priority. Because Jesus is number one. And what you'll find out that if you put Jesus number one, if you make him the most important thing, all the other things in our life will fall into place. All other things will take care of themselves. And when we put Jesus first, everything will be there. So what do we do? Well, we do this. We gather every opportunity around word and sacrament. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in a moment. Is we're all going to come here to our Lord's table to receive that most important thing. That very body and blood that he gave us. As not just simply a, more, a, 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 a nostalgic look back and a nostalgic remembrance where we just say, Oh, remember when Jesus died on the cross? Oh, wasn't that sweet of Him? But we look at it and we proclaim His death. It's a remembrance that proclaims His death and resurrection until He comes again and takes us to live with Him forever. And that's what we do. We huddle around the table. And as you come, I want you to think of one last picture as, as we're here today. I want you to think about the most well-known painting that's out there. And that's the painting of the Last Supper. When you see the table, and you see it laid out with the Passover feast, when you see the wine and the bread, you see Jesus in the center of the table as the celebrant. And on either side, you see the disciples. But notice that they're all on one side of the table. Who's on the other side? Who's looking back? Who's seeing Jesus face to face? Well, we are. 
when we stand at the table. And that's what he wanted us to understand. Is that when we're at the table, we are seeing Jesus face to face. He's here, he is present, and he's reminding us of the Easter message that I have died for you and I've taken away your sins. I have made you my children and you are mine. And so that's what gives us the ability to boldly proclaim, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Gosh, you all should have done better than that. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. We take our tithes and our offerings.